Welcome to Speak. I'm Rick Buecher. Emmanuel Acho and Joy Taylor are off and have entrusted us with the show. We'll see if that was a wise decision. They told me they were sick. Or not. Oh, not a snitch. My bad. My that fault. Make, uh, again, shady sources. Yeah. I got Super Bowl champion James Jones over there, NFL analyst TJ Hushmanzada, and the man. Shady the McCoy. Man, the legend all. I, get, <laughs> I like that. You could have given me a little more love. I like it. He's like, he set it up like the man. The man. The man. Like Since you, you were, the room, you were I waiting for that. Song. Eagles all-time leading rusher. How about that? That's good. That's that's six good. foot towards. I think we gave it a whole. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dak Prescott is set to enter mm. the final year of mm. his contract. But Jerry Jones is still showing faith in his QB, saying, quote, I think there are a handful or more quarterbacks playing who haven't won a Super Bowl that will win a Super Bowl. And I think Dak is one of them. Mm. So, Shady, mm. do you believe that believe. Jerry Jones believes <laughs> that Dak Prescott can win a Super Bowl? Do you believe? Do you believe? <laughs> I'll say this, fellas, slick. Mm. Um, as the owner of a team, what's he supposed to say? Right? My franchise quarterback. What am I going to say? Yeah. No, he's not going to championship. I don't think he can do it. He can't say that. But what is he thinking? What is he thinking? Do you believe it? He's thinking that. He's he, thinking that. He's thinking he can't. He know that boy can't. That's why they're struggling to pay the money right now. They're thinking about it. Do we really want to pay this guy $60 million a year? Right? Because if you really watch what Jerry Jones says about that Prescott, he says it all the time. We're only going to go as far as that Prescott takes us. Yes. And he stops and says, and that Prescott took us. To this point, and we lost. Mm -hmm. That's every offseason is the same old story. Mm -hmm. We come back to this. Is Dak Prescott, is he the guy for the Cowboys? And I'm going to say it, because no one else was going to say it. <laughs> no, he's not. Mm -hmm. You can't find a better roster in football than the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody's complaining. Why did they do so much in free agency? For what? Yeah. The only thing you really need is a, is a, is a running back. You get that in a linebacker. They got, and they got a linebacker. And they got a linebacker. Okay, so then you go to the running backs. You get that in a, in a draft. Yeah. They need to get a better quarterback. Right, but couldn't he say that? Couldn't he say it's not on Dak? Mm -mm. Couldn't he? Couldn't he not? Couldn't, couldn't he just redirect it and say, "Hey, look, I think we need we we can win a Super Bowl. I think we can win a Super Bowl with Dak, mm -hmm. but it's not all on Dak." And that seems to be the direction that he takes. Well, it's never been all on Dak, though. That, that's why that's why Shady just said the roster they have. It's never been all on nine Dak all pros, nine all pros on the roster, and he is one of them. So if you're asking me if I believe. Absolutely. And the main reason why I do mm. believe is because we see dudes with Cowboy a really juice. talented roster. Or Cowboy juice. You like, you like drinking that, Cowboy that's juice. That's okay. I, I, drink, I drink the Dak Prescott In the morning? juice, Cowboys <laughs> juice, all, all that. You know, Mike McCarthy juice. I, I drink that. You know what I'm saying? But we see quarterbacks that play similar to Dak Prescott with really good teams around them make it to the Super Bowl. In this past Super Bowl, we had Brock Purdy. Dak can do that. Dak was an all-pro quarterback this year. They lost to the Green Bay Packers, and you want to put it all on the quarterback, but it isn't all on the quarterback. Last year, yes, put it on the quarterback. You need to make some throws mm. to beat the Niners last year. This year, they laid an egg as a team against the Green Bay Packers. Defensively, offensively, position by position as a team. The defense couldn't stop the run. Dak Prescott making bad decisions. The receivers ain't making big-time plays. What they did all year long, the Green Bay Packers handle them, period. But if you ask me if I believe, if Jerry Jones believes that Dak Prescott could win a championship with this team, I believe he can. TJ, I, I don't. Believe. I don't believe it's. I don't believe it's Cowboys juice. I think it's Mike McCarthy juice. That Jerry Jones. <laughs> he he doesn't believe this what? because if he did, Dak Prescott would have an extension already. Oh, if he believed it, he, he would pay him right now. He's gonna get paid. He has his reservations about it. And you say, oh, he can do what Brock Purdy has done and more. Mm. This is Brock Purdy's first year as a starter, right? Where would he take the? Uh, San Francisco 49ers. Conference game? Super Bowl. He took Super him to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Dak has yet to do... Dak is 2-5 and five in the playoffs. Yes, he is. And, and so, Jerry Jones hopes mm. that Dak Prescott can win a Super Bowl. He does not believe it. Mm. And he's just going off what he sees in the game. When I watch a game, like, Dak Prescott's a good quarterback. Mm. But he cannot take us mm -hmm. to the promised land, and the promised land is the Super Bowl. Because if that was the case... Dak Prescott has his high cap number. We're going to renegotiate. Who's a five quarterback? So that, he's probably assuming Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. He'll win one before Dak. Bur he's Bur probably assuming Burrow. Mm -hmm. He'll probably win one before Dak. Uh, who else? Herbert. 
Justin Herbert. Like, so when that go win? So you plan on giving him a six-year contract? Because all the yeah. quarterbacks going to win one before Dak? Yeah. And so that that that's the only thing that makes me say Jerry Jones is saying what he has to say, mm. not what he believes to be the truth. But besides, what owner is going to say? Besides Joe Burrow, because he's been to the Super Bowl, how y'all just throwing them boys in front of Dak? Herbert? And Josh I mean, and all the boys. Well, if you're Herbert right, if lost you're in the playoffs, if you're Josh running, been in the playoffs a if lot. If you, Mr. James Jones, is, is running the team, yes, you're taking no. Josh Allen okay, and did. Justin do Herbert that, and Joe that. Burrow do before that. Dak Prescott. You, you, you are, James. Yes, I you am. The right. So that's who I want on my team. We're asking, do we believe in Dak Prescott so, that he can get us there? Not who's better player. I think the the bigger issue is this, James Jones, right? Because he likes Cowboys. <laughs> when you watch these games, right? Yeah. I watched games where Josh didn't play great, but they lost, and it wasn't all because of him. If you look at the last times the Cowboys had a chance to go to the conference game, whose fault was it? Because so, you wanted last year through picks. This last year, right? Against the against the uh, the Packers, a young team. You can't start the game off throwing picks, he James. Threw, he threw a pick early. You ain't throw. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He threw two actually. I know he threw one was two, a pick six, one. and the other one he, he threw a pick, game. and they got an own what, yeah. red zone or something like that. So, like, it's about momentum. You're just talking about, okay, the defense didn't play well, he, he threw picks. No. no, it's bigger than that. We play this game very well at a high level. So when you talk about momentum, that's everything, right? You, you, the anticipation for this game, a home game with Big Dallas, you got the old wideout, all these type of things. Mm. You got a young team, an experienced team on the road. Yeah. And they come there, and then we playing, they score first, cool. It happens. And then on offense, we don't give them nothing. And then their quarterback that we, as an all-pro this year, that you think so highly of, yep. throwing picks, mm -hmm. and you talk about momentum, it's gone, it's lost. Yep. There's no way they could have won that game the way he played. And then if you look at the San Francisco game, right, the year after that, or before that, they could win that game with a rookie quarterback against them, Brock Purdy, who didn't play well at all. The defense played phenomenal in everything they did that game to, to, yep. to lose. He did it, Dak, by throwing picks. So when you're talking about winning a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Let's put the Super Bowl, like, over here. Do you need this? Let's put all the Super Bowls from over here. When we talk about the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, let's, no Super Bowl. Let's talk about a conference game. Let's talk about that. He hasn't done it because he can't. Yeah. And I think he's a really, really good regular season quarterback. But when the, the lights get real, real bright, we cannot find number five. Right. But, but, but let's, be, let's be real. It's not just Dak Prescott. It's been a long time since the Cowboys mm -hmm. have won a Super Bowl. It's been almost 30 it's years. Been a long time mm -hmm. since been and what is and what has Jerry Jones been selling that entire time? This is why I and don't. And that's why he says what he just said. That's exactly right. It's not that he believes it. It's that he wants Cowboy Nation to believe it. Because he has what he does better than anybody else is that he sells the Cowboys. He make that money. Like he make that money now. That's right. And so he has to have you believe because the reality is you are either letting Dak Prescott walk. Mm -hmm. Or you're paying him $60 million a year. Yeah. Wow. And right? there's going to be a bunch of people knocking at the door if Dak Prescott walks. I promise you. You said a bunch of people? A bunch okay. of people. No, Whatever team that. need a quarterback is going to be knocking at the door to pay Dak Prescott. How many Prescott. you think? I don't know. Five at 60, six, whatever at 60 five, mils? Whatever at 60 five mils? or six teams 60, that's going to need mils? a no. quarterback. I don't know what the number's going to be, but they are going to want Dak Prescott as their quarterback. And that's the thing, oh, they'll, man. They'll pay him I know Dak Prescott has not delivered a, an NFC championship. But Dak Prescott is a really good quarterback in this We're league. We're not saying he he is. talking about it like Dak Prescott is not a well, really good quarterback I in this league. I think he's a really good quarterback. The he Niners is. game last year, I could blame that on Dak. We need you to make a couple throws, bruh, and you did not deliver, and our defense played they tell off. This Packer game, bruh, the Packers went up and down the field on the Dallas Cowboys. Did Dak play well? No. Nobody played well for the Dallas Cowboys that game. The Green James. Bay Packers had they number. Listen, when you play football, there's going to be games where the offense doesn't play well. Yep, yep. The defense, you got to carry it. Yes. So now when the defense doesn't play well, like the Cowboys did not do against no Green question. Bay, you need Dak Prescott yeah. to say, I got, got y'all today. He did. I got y'all today. And he did it. And so it can't be always the defense is going to carry us. The defense, the year before against the Niners, yep. defense carried them. Carried them. Dak didn't have them. When the defense couldn't carry them, yeah. Dak didn't have them. Mm -hmm. So at some point, point, you got to have our back yeah. as much as we have yours. Uh -huh. That's all I'm saying is yeah. when I believe that Jerry believes is when Dak gets an extension. James Jones, let me ask you this question. And by the way, anytime my mom used my full name, I knew something was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe that Jerry Jones has done everything possible to make this a Super Bowl team? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. He's put everything, he's put everything he could on this ball club to win. He and spent even the money when, and, and even when and even when Dak Prescott money. even first took over as the quarterback, right? Dak Prescott wasn't this guy that's going to throw people open. Put the ball like Patty Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, whatever spot you want to put the ball in on the field. That's not Dak's game. Dak needs guys that can win and get open and show you he has separation. So what did Jerry Jones do? He said, "You know what? I'm going to a trade for Mari Cooper." Because mm. he's one of those dudes that can create separation and Dak can see that he's open. And you've seen Dak's game go to another level. Mm -hmm. And then he drafted C.D. Lamb. Mm. And you've seen what C.D. Lamb did. So he's done everything he could to give Dak help on both sides of the ball to make this a championship football team. And that's why I said last year, if you that quarterback against the Niners, you need to make a couple throws and your team is going to Philly. He did not do that. This past year, I can't put it all on Dak. But I do believe Jerry Jones has put together a heck of a roster to compete for a championship. All right, let's go to another quarterback that I'm sure James Jones is going to stand up for in a big way. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, first oh, season man, this is be crazy. in New York, only lasted four plays. But Jets head coach Robert Sala says that the four-time MVP is doing his rehab and is, quote, on a mission. Mm. Sala went on to say that Rodgers is excited about attacking this season. So we will return to you, James Jones. Yeah. <laughs> what would be Ooh. a successful season for Aaron Rodgers? A successful season for AR-12 that I play with, but he AR-8 now. Uh, Can we just call him Aaron Rodgers, please? AR, <laughs> AR. Um, you got to win the Super Bowl. Point blank, period. Oh God. You, just, you just intro my man. You said four-time MVP, high. Super Bowl champion. But my dog Shady gets up here all the time, and I get mad because I really can't fight and defend Aaron Rodgers for only having one championship, and I believe he's the greatest. But I can't really defend him no. because that one championship sits out there. You got Patty Mahomes got three of them, Joe got four of them. So for Aaron Rodgers, coming off this Achilles, yeah, we all want to see him healthy, but a successful season for him and the New York Jets is winning a Super Bowl. And I'm not even saying getting there. Winning a Super Bowl. They brought Aaron Rodgers over there to get this team to the Super Bowl and win it. That's the type of player Aaron Rodgers is. Mm. If we're looking at this roster, this roster is clearly better than the roster that he started off with last year. Offensive line going to be better. Brees Hall coming off of his ACL, he's going to be better. You have Mike Williams coming off of an injury, but you get him on the other side of Gary Wilson, the receiver core is going to be better. We all know that they have big-time playmakers on the defensive side of the ball, all pro-type players on the defensive side of the ball. The defense will be better, especially with Aaron Rodgers being able to help him out and stay on the football field. So for me, they have to win the Super Bowl. That, that's it. For Aaron Rodgers, you have to get that done. Uh, if you go out there and ball out and you're in the MVP conversation, we've seen that. If you get to the playoffs and your team is 13 and 3, 13 and whatever, we've seen that. We've seen you accomplish all that. We need to see you get back to a Super Bowl and win that thing. <laughs> For Aaron Rodgers, personally, thank God he said the truth. He needs to stay healthy. For the Jets, they got to make the playoffs. You talking about Super Bowl? Uh, 13 and 4 and when when the last time we seen the Jets do this? <laughs> yeah. This this isn't normal territory for the Jets. For Aaron Rodgers, it is in the, that's the Green Bay Packers. That's the question. The Jets Aaron just Rodgers. need to make it to the playoffs. They will. They don't even know what that is like in New York wearing the green and seeing them playing a playoff game. And so for Aaron Rodgers, to me, stay healthy personally. For the team, just make it to the playoffs. So, so real quick, real quick. Because we talking Aaron Rodgers. So you saying a successful season for Aaron Rodgers, get to the playoffs first round, bow, go home? You got to get to the playoffs because no when you team. have Aaron Rodgers, you no. always have a no. chance. Aaron Rodgers played, what was it? Three snaps? Two four. snaps. Four. Four, four, snaps. Snaps. Four, snaps. four snaps. Four snaps. Make it to the playoffs. The Jets haven't been to the playoffs in over a decade. See, I'm going to let But, 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 but yes. they, they never had a guy like Aaron Rodgers. The, the last best quarterback they've had, since A-Rod is Mark Sanchez, Ooh. right? And, and, I, and I like Mark. Mark's, like Mark, he's, Mark you know, but he's, he's good. He's good. He, you know, A-Rod's a <laughs> supposed to be great, right? That's what they tell yeah, me. He is great. This brother over here, right? Yeah. Always tells how great he is. He's this, yeah. he's that, the third. I don't know him as being... Now I understand why you agree But with this is the thing, though, because I, I, I think he's a great quarterback, and if we talk about him as the same breath with the Tom Brace, which is crazy to me, but they do it all the time. Yeah. I, I need to see it. No question. Aaron Rodgers is the greatest regular season quarterback we've ever seen. Every year, he's going to ball out, right? right. Soon into the playoffs, yeah. what happens to him? So I need a Super Bowl from Aaron Rodgers, yeah. right? 
Four MVPs. This is the era for it. Are things elevated because no, 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 no. Hold, 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 elevated, hold, hold, hold. elevated it's not, it's, because he doesn't buy that Aaron Rodgers can actually take them to a Super that's Bowl. That's my thing. So yeah. he's setting it because, in Super Bowl because no, no. he knows he can't get there. That's not that's true. That's what that is. What I'm saying is, if you're so great, like everybody yeah. talks about, yeah. if, you, if if you if if you ask a player who's the goat, right? A lot of them gonna say a Rod. Yeah. Because he's so talented. Cool. I'm not against that. Let's say that's the, that's that's the, that's that's accurate. Now show me. Show me that. Yeah. Because when I look at Patrick Mahomes, he shows me that. Isn't in, the, in, the, in the playoffs, but, in the playoffs, in his short period of time, yeah. he's 15 to 3. I ain't even talking about the, the Super Bowls and the NBA. I ain't talking about none of that. Yeah. Just win games in the playoffs. He's 15 to 3. Tom Brady, right? I love to say he's the greatest, but but some guys think that that A Rod is he's so much more talented. He looks better when he throws the ball. Cool. Tom Brady's 35 and 13. He's 40 something too. Yeah. Mm. So my thing is this, A Rod, I don't want to see you be great in the regular season. You always that. Because in the playoffs, you are 11 and 10. That's what you are. That's what you are. Right. Is that is correct. So I didn't see a championship. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. I'm, I'm with you. I, I guess I'm the only one who doesn't have an agenda up here today. No. Because for me, it's they need to get a playoff win. They need to get to the playoffs, and they need to win a playoff. Because I'm looking at this from the perspective of the New York Jets fans. Yeah. I've, having seen the team last year, I can't expect Aaron Rodgers. I know we went into last season thinking they got Aaron Rodgers. They're a Super Bowl contender. Yeah. I personally didn't think that, but a lot of people did. Yeah. But we got to see this team mm -hmm. for an entire year yeah. with, without Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And I didn't see a team that was only one Aaron Rodgers short of winning a Super Bowl. I don't know about that one. No, 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 no. We were talking about this defense being one of the all-time great defenses. They, they did not show that last they year. They tried as hard as they could. Oh, 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 oh they come did. on. They we're going to try. For hours. Come right. on. It's hard as hell. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Come on. No, no, no. Oh, here we go again. Play going to help them. Understood. Inter interception. Here we go again. They were, <laughs> hey, but they weren't as good as we thought they were going to be. And yeah, they're going to have a few new additions, and offensively, they should be considerably better. But I look at the competition, yeah. I, thinking that they're going to win a Super Bowl yeah. is unrealistic so at this skip, point skip. based on the team more so than yeah. Aaron Rodgers. That's what I'm saying. I agree with you if you're talking Jets. A playoff win for Jets fans and Jets organizations? Cool. Yeah. The question is, what would be a successful season for Aaron Rodgers? Mm -hmm. if you're you satisfied. have playoff wins. You have MVPs. You have a Super Bowl. You ain't been back like Shady always get on me. I'm dusting that thing off. We was 2010. Right. It's 2024 now. For Aaron Rodgers, my dude that I believe is the greatest, that I'll argue with anybody about, he has to win a Super you, Bowl in New York. That is good. success for him. You think he's as good right now, and especially coming off an Achilles, he can be as good right now as he was back when he was... I have there. never seen nobody throw the football like Aaron Rodgers has threw this football. Mm. So I don't care, Achilles... I can't even argue that. that. He, this dude uh, throwing the football, talented. and why I argue about him being the greatest is because of what I've seen with my own two eyes. Ain't nothing wrong with my man's right arm. He can spin this football. If he is healthy out there playing with what they have as a roster, Aaron Rodgers got to take this team to the Super And that division that division ain't that great no more, right? Look at the Bills team. All their best players in the league left. Yeah. Right? Who else? The, the Patriots. Dolphins. I mean, you know what the Patriots look like. Yeah. The Dolphins is probably the only. The Bills still got Josh. Yeah, Robert. and you so know what? Not, not gonna just, be easy. But what I'm saying is that you got to. No, we're talking AFC. You gotta, we're not gotta, talking to division. We're talking AFC. I'm gonna see you have a better shot. Division, All I'm saying is this chance. though. Right? I, the one thing about this football thing is you need a good quarterback to win, yeah. right? That's what, that's what they say. Okay. So, well, God, so well, God darn, you got one of the best of all time, what they say. That's it. Right? You see the most he spins the best and all that. That's cool. Yes, I'm not disputing that. I'm happy he can do that. Show me the playoffs. Because the only time you spin that ball like that <laughs> is in a regular season. Listen, but you got to, when you guys are saying win a Super Bowl look for who, Aaron. Look who is in the AFC. Thank you. Another it's great not going to be you. easy. And you, 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 say you, you, you have it. say, it's a hard period You're to You're trying to take a team and an organization. This is foreign to them. This is foreign don't to them. a pass, T. I uh, know, I'm just saying. I know you, you don't, you're not even that type of brother. No, don't no, give no. him a pass. I, I believe Aaron Rodgers is a really, really, he's not a good player. He's a great player. Is he? But it's going to be so hard when you set the bar at the Super Bowl. You. When you know he's not going to reach that. I don't believe wait, 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 wait. You know why? that. Well, but wait, no, wait. he's right. If you if, know if that. you got one of the best quarterbacks of all time, right? Hold on. The best talking about that. We're talking about one of the best quarterbacks of all time, right? 
Why can't he have a shot? Good, really good deep. Really good deep. Everybody has a shot. No, 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 no. See, y'all don't get a hook with this. See, I hate when they get let A Rock off the hook. You got a really, really good defense for one. That's part of it. Check mark. Check. Right? You got a lot of talented around you, bro. A wide receiver and in the and in the backfield. Check. The backfield might be the most talented one. I want to get to that. Really good backfield. Check. And then you got the best check. One of the best courts of all time. That's, That's what they say. That's it. So why are we not why are we not holding to that standard? We, In 19 years, he's been to one one Super Bowl? We are. I am. Not sincere. Yeah. They can't that see that. Look, they can't see their All right. All right. I'm glad you guys agreed with me. No, I'm sorry. Uh, coming up, the Warriors took an L last night, and you have to hear what uh, Steve Kerr has to say about Steph Curry being on the bench for a big part of the second half. That's next on Speed. And don't forget, you can check us out every day on the Fox Sports channel on Sirius XM. It's time for our big story sponsored by the U.S. Army. Be all you can be. The Warriors lost by four points to the Timberwolves last night. The biggest headline was Steph Curry being on the bench for the last four minutes of the third quarter and about six minutes into the fourth quarter. Steve Kerr gave his explanation as to why. Take a listen. We can't expect to, to just ride Steph um, game after game after game. You, you know, these last few weeks have been really tough on him. We've, we've, we've put the burden of this franchise on his shoulders for <laughs> 15 years. Um, we can't expect him to play 35 minutes. we got five games in seven days on this road trip. So um, if you want to say that him playing 30 minutes instead of 32 is the difference in the win and the loss, I, I totally disagree with that. I don't know. We might have to cut Steve Kerr's minutes. He's looking <laughs> a little fatigued there. Uh, TJ, do you agree with Steve Kerr's approach with Steph Curry? Absolutely not. Mm. You, you, he, he says he doesn't agree with it because he's the one distributing the minutes, so of course he agrees with what he's doing. It, it just isn't working. Sure. And you got the Rockets. They coming. Mm -hmm. One the game Rock back. The Rockets is like that team in a 4 by 4 You had that anchor leg, the baton in here. You, ooh, you start hearing. They're coming. Yeah. And you sitting four minutes, the last four minutes of the third quarter, the first six minutes of the fourth quarter, that's 10 straight minutes. It, you want him in clutch time. Mm -hmm. Sit him a little more in the first half so that in the second half, he can give you a little more because if Steph Curry plays 36 minutes in that game, mm -hmm. they win. He says, oh, it won't make a difference. They lost by four. They probably win that game if he plays four more minutes because there's so many more possessions where the Timberwolves now have to play them differently with Steph on the court than they would when he's not on the court. Fair. And so he knows that Steph probably should play a little more. You don't make the playoffs? Yeah. He got nothing but time to rest. Mm. <clears throat> he has nothing but time to rest. So me, I'm putting Curry at 35, 36 minutes every game down the stretch unless it's a back-to-back -back because I need him. Because if we don't make this playing game, he has nothing but time yeah. to heal his body. Shade, Shade our Warriors, uh, our resident Warriors fan, what, you, what do you think? I mean, it's a tough one. I, I kind of agree with, with Steve Kerr. One thing I will say about this, man, with Steve Kerr, when he talks, I listen, mm -hmm. right? Because he he's has that, that right. Why is that? He's proved it. Has he not? Yes, he has is. he not? Right? So when I look at even the things that they, the players say about him, I look at a guy like um, Kaminga, who's a young, talented player that was up and down, and now he's grooving, and now he's rocking. But before that, Stam and Steve Kerr had a conversation, right? Now, some coach when a young guy wants to play, I've been here, you think I get the ball more? I remember playing with Andy Reid, Deshaun Jackson, Michael Vick, and all these guys, and, and Jeremy Macklin. I want the ball. I'm the best player for real. Let's, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. I was younger. Andy Reid said, hold up, man. Hold, hold on. Slow down for a second. Mike Vick is that guy, right? We just paid him a lot of money. Deshaun Jackson, you know what he does. Jerry Mack, first rounder. Your time's gonna come. And that was a, a, a hard conversation, but it was the right one. And was he not right? Was he not right? He was right. When my time came, you see what happened. All pro, 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 all decade. You name it. So when you have a you coach... Time is... The clock's ticking, <laughs> though. When you have... TJ's, TJ's right. Dude. I get it, but when you have a coach, right, you gotta trust him. Look at Clay Thompson. Well, he talked about it. I just seen an uh, uh, interview the other day, and I had my guy send it to me, where he was saying, like, Kerr sat me down and said, look, man, you a hell of a player, mm. right? The things you've done, we can't be the worst without you. We're going to need you, but we need you to be a better leader. We need these young guys that's playing that we need to play better for us to have success. We need you to have a better attitude because when you're down and, and you're in the dumps, the young boys follow that. Yeah. Things like that, a coach matters. So when you ask me, is it the right move to sit Steph a little bit longer? Yeah, because we're going to need Steph. Yeah. And another thing is, 
Let's be fair here. Steph been carrying the Warriors for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. the, the brother need a break, yeah. right? If we have any <laughs> nah, chance, keep carrying us. Yeah. If we gonna have, if we gonna have any chance to be successful in the play-in in the playoffs, because mm -hmm. we gonna make the play-in. Let's yeah, keep it real. Yeah. We gonna need Steph to dominate. Yeah. And if you, you look, look at, listen, man. Yeah. You looking at me like that? Hey. And on this show, we make bets. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> if you want to bet right now, oh, here we go. I bet you right now. That they're not gonna make the play-in? They not gonna what make better, it. What better, a little hundred dollars that the, that the Warriors make the play-in? I'll take that. How you gonna bet him a hundred dollars and you be starting off with a thousand with me and Wait all that stuff? You just go. Y'all, y'all gamble. I don't gamble like that. Hundred dollars, hundred dollars that the Warriors are going to make the play-in. Who's gonna make the play-in? The, 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 the Rockets. The Rockets. Jalen Green, Green, let's go. It's Warriors. Jalen Green. Jalen Green, let's go. Oh, yeah, so Fred, Fred Van Fleet, no, let's so, go. So the Warriors is gonna get into the play-in for sure. One Come on, man. You just lost your hundred dollars. They gonna get there. <laughs> but they in the play-in, and my man been playing thirty minutes all season. Hmm. <laughs> Why we mad at Steve Kerr? You carried us here. <laughs> you carried us to the play-in game, if that's what we're saying. So listen, man, I know when we get into the playoffs, I am going to need you to carry us and help us win, but we need to figure out what else we got, too, to help you, Thank Steph you. Curry. Thank you, that's what I'm saying. Just like when you're getting blown out in the game, hey, all my starters, come on, let's see if some of these young boys show, some, show us some spark or something that they can play. Maybe we can get them in the rotation. Yeah. Or if you're up by a lot, the same thing. Start, let's see if some of these young boys can help. So... Even with Steph Curry playing a lot of minutes this year, the Warriors are the 10th seed. So if I'm looking at this like we have five games in seven days, man, I'm going to rest my star, and I'm going to make sure that if it comes down to one game mm -hmm. to get into the play-in, I'm going to make sure he's ready to play 40 minutes. So I agree with Kerr because me playing Steph and leaning on Steph all season long mm -hmm. has got me to the 10th seed. If the Rockets weren't coming. Bro, they not. This wouldn't be a conversation. <laughs> They're a no, game back. I know they They're a game back. back. They won 10 if, of the last 11. If yeah, they man. weren't coming, this wouldn't be a conversation. Oh, yeah. They are right. Pause. <laughs> They're right there. <laughs> They're right there. <laughs> They're right there. I'm trying not to look at you. They're, yeah. <laughs> They're right there. Uh. And so you have to change. And, like, you bring up, you know, oh, he was, Kuminga didn't like his playing time. I don't think he handled the Kuminga situation the correct way. Kuminga should have been playing. Mm. He should have been playing. It's all timing, though. And, and now that he's playing well, it's looked as, oh, he handled it the right way. How do we know Kuminga couldn't have been doing what he's doing now? We don't know that. Well, I've been I, I, we don't I, know I'm, that. I'm a warrior nut, yeah. so I've been watching Kuminga, and he's talented, but it, you can see he's pressing. You know what I mean? I want to get more places. So I'm, I'm trying hey, to every shot. Hey, so it takes his time. When, I, when my playing time is inconsistent, I got to press, because I know I may not play the next game. Uh, hey, hey, Slick. So I got to impress the coach. Hey, Slick, real quick, though. So, because, mm. like, the whole thing about Steph Curry's minutes. Yeah. Now, they played the, the Pacers, right, and they lost. Yep. Now, Steph played the whole fourth quarter. Yep. And they still lost. That's what I'm yep. saying. So you are going to need some of these role players to, 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 to get some minutes yeah. and, 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 and make some, some contribute to the wins. We yeah. need y'all, too. In a tight game, just sit me the first four minutes of the yep. fourth quarter instead of the first six. But Those you, two but, minutes, but they, they and, and, and how, we, how we know Steph's health, though? Another thing like, about being at the ah, top player, you, you, don't, you, don't, don't, I don't never, you don't never tell the, like, like, I might not tell the media everything because you have to report yeah. it. Well, no. but, but Coach, but Coach Reed, no, hey, Coach, hey, I, bro. You did mess yeah. up. Hold on, if that's hold the on. case, he's handling it correctly. Okay. If so, that's the case. I'm glad we, we brought this up because he did miss five games after spring yes, he his did. ankle. Yes, and he's had ankle issues historically. And if you look, we have a full screen here. If you look at how he has played, how he played prior to the injury to where he is now, all of his numbers are down. His shooting is down. He's, he's only shooting 37% from uh, three-point range, 44% overall. Scoring is down. Assists are down. Turnovers are up. I believe that, first of all, that Steve Kerr has earned no, for no. all that he has done. Absolutely. Not only that he's won four championships, but he took a team that fell off the cliff for two years, and he built Andrew Wiggins into a player who could win a championship. He made Jordan Poole into a championship-level player. Like, he recreated a championship team and, and pulled all the strings and pushed all the buttons in order for them to win another one. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt in terms of how he's using Steph in general and how he's using all the pieces on this team. I don't know if they're good enough to, go, to, to be a factor in the postseason, but I They're have not. to believe that Steve is doing everything he can to get the most out of whatever this team is. And the heart of it for me is that 
their stars are not at the same level that they were. To James' yeah. point, like, Steph hasn't been Steph yeah. this entire season. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're seeing maybe at age 36, for his size, how great he has to be athletically to get his Work shot off, hard, that it's just, he, he doesn't have the 6'8", Mm. 270 pounds yeah. that LeBron has to lean on. Or a, or yeah, a all that. Kind of, yeah. So it may just be time is 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 hitting, yeah. right? And that's not on Steve. That's just I'm trying to make something and, out of and that, and something that's where, I don't and have. And that's anymore. where I'm at. Like we talk, we talk in minutes wise, and and that's where I'm at. When you play 40, when you play 35, when you play 37 minutes, whatever the amount of minutes that Warriors fans or whoever wanted him to play, yeah. we are the 10th seed. Yeah. Like, it hasn't been... I need to figure out some, some other stuff that I can do, maybe some other rotations that I can do. Maybe in the fourth quarter, okay, man, that rotation worked when I sat Curry. We said they only lost by four points, so it's not like they was just getting beat down. Yeah. Like, I'm trying... I need to see what else can work. I know if I need Steph Curry to play more minutes, he can. But if I can figure out a way to help him and be able to get some other guys to steal some minutes and rest him, I want to do that. Because at the end of the day, rested or not rested, we sitting at 10. Yeah. Good point. Sure. All right, we coming up. at 11. In my hours too, bro. <laughs> March Madness is in full swing, and the Sweet 16 is all set. We will talk all about it with UCLA head coach Mick Cronin, who is here with us in studio. That's next on Speak. Welcome back. We're in the middle of March Madness, and we're now joined by a man who is a two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year, there and his is. teams have made the NCAA tournament 14 times Ooh. in 21 seasons. A son of the natty, a fellow son of the natty, UCLA head coach Mick Cronin. Welcome to speak. Yes, sir. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks, sure, man. Thanks for joining us. So, um, who do you have winning your bracket? Mm. Well. <laughs> we don't have many rules in the NCAA anymore. Yeah. But I can't have a bracket. Is that oh, right? Mm -hmm. that was yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, went, that went bad for a former UCLA football coach yeah. one time. Uh, Rick Ringer was Rick Newhouse uh, something like that. But I, I mean, look, UConn's a prohibitive favorite yeah. in my in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But then you know, neutral site, like these guys in the NFL, it's no home, you know, no home field in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You're right. Right. Everything's right. neutral site, and you know, one shot. Uh, you know, one injury. So, it, it, look, they're favorite, but anything can happen. So, uh, I hope this isn't violating the no bracket <laughs> rule, but um, who do you have seeing them in the, the championship game? I think it, it, it could be anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, look, Purdue would be the obvious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but... That's my bracket. You're right. right. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it, this tournament said a lot of favorites. No. A lot, lot of favorites in the Sweet 16, which... You know, um, people say they love Cinderella. I know the networks don't. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. You should hear them. They don't. They don't. Yeah. You should hear them. They yeah. don't. They, they don't. So, so, but I think it's going to lend to some great games this weekend. Yeah. You right. know, there was some mismatches yesterday. Yeah. So yes, it was. Yeah. Should be. You could just see watching hey. it. And I know you say you're a basketball guy. I, and I want some money. I want some money. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I want to ask you this, though, Mick. So, like, uh, I'm a big believer in, in talent always wins, yeah. right? But as I got older in the NFL, that's not really true, right? We see that with Aaron Rodgers and John Brady. Anyway, my thing is a guy like Zach Eady, who is experienced, he's older, right? And he's having all the success in the world. Yeah. That's what we talk about Purdue. But my question to you is more of like a team like Kentucky, who always gets all the top talent, but can't seem to, to win. And I was wondering, is it a really a, a thing of, hey, you need some young talent, but you probably need some more yeah. veteran leadership and experience. I'd say just what you learned as you guys got older playing, right? The value of knowing what you're doing. Mm. Right. Um, and, and you you look, you look at the truth of it now is do guys stay that long? Right. And then, you know, as you, you've covered the NBA for a long time, there's a difference between being a talented NBA prospect right. mm. and a great college player. Mm. Big difference. Right. right. So is, is it a mix? Right. the same thing in football. College football yeah. but, it's the same yeah. thing because you say three years. Mm -hmm. But in our sport, you can be this super talented guy that everybody's talking about on all these shows all year. You see Zion, right. you see Zion. Yeah. But the most valuable player is a guy like a Zach Eady. Yes, yes. Okay, UConn's backcourt. Yes. In their fifth year, Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer. Last year for me, Tiger Campbell, Jaime mm -hmm. Hawkins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th there's other guys who are better pro prospects right. maybe, but they're not 
they're not the best college player. Mm. And there's a big, you know, there's so many young and old guys in our sport versus, you know, like I said, it's progression in the, in the football right. you know, world. But, uh, so, how, so wait, real quick, uh, a second part to that. I just want to ask, so is it a, when you're recruiting, right, are, are you recruiting that like, we do want to want them five stars, them top guys that can leave and want it done? And is there a mixture of where we want to get some guys that we can develop that can become solid college? How does that, that mixture, how do you do that when you recruit? Look, I've never, uh, obviously, my last five years have been at UCLA. Before that, uh, I, was, I had to develop everybody. Oh, okay. You know, I was, you know, and everybody I worked for, developmental coaches, are the best, Bob Huggins, Rick Pitino. But, Some good ones, yeah, um, for sure. you know, look, we won big at UCLA. And we had some one-and-done guys, mm -hmm. but we won big because our veterans. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, our, our veterans got us to a Final Four, two straight sweet, sweet 16s. You know, our best players were veterans. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and now you can get veterans in the transfer portal. Yeah. The world has totally oh, changed. That's true. So, you know, that, that's where the, it's, a whole, it's a whole other topic we mm -hmm. may hit. Speaking of talent, some young talent, you got a chance to see Bronny James. Oh, yeah. Bronny James play. He played against him. What would be your advice to him? Would you, as a young player, him being a freshman, would you advise him to come out, or would you advise him to stay and kind of develop and play a couple more years of college basketball, mm -hmm. or at least one more year of college basketball? Well, I would tell any young player um, that in his situation, that like, he's got to improve, right? I mean, he didn't play well enough this year to, to show he was ready. Now, you can say, well, he didn't have that much opportunity because mm -hmm. he was behind Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ellis. Nice. You know, so, and those are great players. Yes, they are. And I know Bronny from his time at, at Sierra Canyon. Um, you know, I actually recruited his father. One of the, I think it was the only guy that drove through snowstorms. Huggins used to make me do that to go up to Akron. But um, his situation is just not like anybody else's. You know, so if your father's going to have influence, do you go now to, mm -hmm. so you can play with your father? So it's just, it's so different. I can tell you guys, I grew up with Pete Rose Jr. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, so you're you know, a Western Hills guy, right? Exactly. So we're from the west side of Cincinnati. And, I just can't tell you, like, I'm so happy that Pete's been able, he's been a minor league baseball guy. He's a lifer. He just loves the game. And he's had a great life. He's got a great family. Um, that the pressure of being Pete Rose Jr. didn't really basically ruin his life. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you just, Imagine, is, yeah. it was hard. I mean, I'm telling you, we, you know, it was, it was hard. Like, there was a group of us, we're all, we watched what it was to be his, you know, the son of the great Pete Rose. So I can't, I know what, Bronny goes through. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it up close as a mm -hmm. kid. So, uh, you know, he's on the, our, our rival, but I root for him. You mm -hmm. know, so it's a, but his situation to make a decision to go pro or that obviously is going to be really more based off of his father's influence and does he want to play with his dad? Uh, with, you know, every other freshman, they don't have that choice. They don't, no, <laughs> they, no. You know, their, their dad's not arguably the best player ever. Yeah. I got to ask you something, um, Kansas coach. Bill Self yeah. said. Kansas mm. was a, a four seed. They were blown out by a fifth seed of Gonzaga in the second round. And after yeah, the game... I saw this. This was yeah, wild. I've seen this. <laughs> Coach Bill Self had this to say. I think for the last month, I've been thinking about next season, to be honest. Not in the moments during the game, but obviously we played. We had eight guys on scholarship. What do you... What do you make of him <laughs> thinking Kansas. that way, even though they did get into the tournament? Yeah, first first of all, it's I will tell you guys this, and you guys had to do it after a loss when you have to go in front of the media. Um, you're not always at your best. It's emotions, yeah. It's yeah, very, no, you know, I get it. Yes. Because, look, you're such a competitor. Sure. You're, you're trying to go in and be calm and congratulate the other team. So that, that's a fight in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you don't know the context. Like, he didn't just sit there and announce it. Mm -hmm. He was asked the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So people don't, but they just take that answer and say, this is what Bill said. But he was answering a question. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you answer the question truthfully, which he obviously did. Yeah. Okay. When they asked him if he had thought about next season, well, I've been thinking about it for a month. Yeah. You know, or do you take pause? I'm sure he, you know, now that it was used as clickbait, you know, Bill's a friend of mine. He would like to have it back. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he would like that because it makes it look like, well, he, was, he wasn't even thinking about winning. No, 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 no. He's thinking he about leaving his team or... Yeah. All that. Like, look, Bill Self trying to win every game. Watch him on the sideline. You, you know, we all look like yeah. we're one step from a cardiology, you know, <laughs> situation. You, you Understood. Know. But, it, you know, he told the truth. Hey, it, he should be thinking of... We all are thinking yeah. ahead. Yeah. Right. You know, hey, what's my team? I take notes. 
okay, this is what we're not good at. This is, yeah. you know, just so I don't forget. Yeah. You know, not just on scouting. I'm taking notes on, you know, we're not athletic enough. We need more shooting. Mm. You know, don't get emotional when the season's over. Make sure that, that you remember that you got to have these three things. Well, so, yeah, she's sure you're thinking ahead. But it just, it, it was, didn't come out great. Yeah. You know. Well, see, I, I appreciate I'm going to use that, though. We, yeah, I'm I mean, my best, man. You know, y'all. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Stop, laughs> no, no, I mean, we, we've, we've all, we've all been best, there. Man. But I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate when you guys are honest. And yeah. I believe that it's on us not to take it out of context not to blow it up yeah. because there is logic in what you're saying. And if any of us look at how we do our jobs, we're not just always thinking about today. Yeah. We're thinking about tomorrow too. And for some reason, we sometimes look at coaches and players through a different lens yeah. as if they live a different way or have a different way of thinking. And it's, and so I'm, I'm with you, and I, it, it bothers me when something like this ends up making Bill look bad yeah. when it's, it's just the reality of the situation. Yeah, right. it gets taken different ways. But look, you know, that's where um, you can't coach at our level and not understand you're, you're, going to, you're never going to be perfect. That's going to happen. You're going to be criticized. Mm. And he shouldn't even be thinking about it. He needs to be thinking about his team and recruiting. And like I am, I'm in the back texting kids in the portal. Right. <laughs> right, right. Which, which, which well, we want to ask you about. That, that, that's the gift and the curse of being a coach, being a player. You have to deal with all the yeah, things. It's reality. But, but since we're talking about gift and the curse, how do you feel about the NIL, Ooh, right, since this has occurred to and, the game? So I got a question for you guys. Okay. How do you feel as good as you guys Man, were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is my, people say, hey, well, you know, uh, all these guys at UCLA, we have unbelievable alumni, right, in mm -hmm. basketball. You know, they, 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 they should give money. And I was like, well, if I was Reggie Miller, I'd be thinking, well, I didn't get paid. Yeah. Right. Well, at least above well, the table. I was like, <laughs> no, I mean, you know. <laughs> it, oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, all right. I ain't gonna, oh, I can't talk. Open up that. But I, I will say this. I love it for the kids. Oh, yeah. Because, because, right, I was that player when I went to Pittsburgh, right, and, and I was a badass. I had Dave Wong as my head coach, and I got busy every game, right? And I was only there for two years, right, year and a half or something like that. I left after my sophomore year. And everybody had all my stuff on. Shady this, shady that, you yeah. know, my number on it. I have no money. I had oodles and noodles, yeah, right? And I enjoyed college, but if I'd have had that other stuff, yeah, I would have struggled as much. I might have made different decisions. You know what? I really want to stay one more year, man. I, yeah. We have a really good team coming in. Damn, we might get a super our championship. No, I'm going to stay. You, you wouldn't have stayed. Well, no, no. no I'm what, just kidding. What, what I'm saying is, like, now you're getting money a certain way, you think different. So yeah. what I want to ask you from from recruiting because um, Deion Sanders is a really good close friend of mine, right? Yeah. And he's real vocal about it. Like, he go in there to see kids and talk to them. First thing they say is, yo, what's the money like, coach? Uh -huh. So I want to ask you from that perspective as a coach, like, yeah. has the NIL, like, changed the game for recruiting for you? Is oh, it yeah. In totally a good or bad right. way? Well, I, I think it, it, I don't look at it like that because what happens is if you say the truth, there, sure, there's good and bad. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I play golf at El Caballero in the Valley with, where Chris Paul plays. Mm. And Chris comes up, you know, and Chris like, this is not good. This is Chris talking. Okay. And I said, well, why do you say that? And he's like, well, they're not going to save any of the money. Some of them won't even save the money to pay their taxes. Mm. And oh. they're not going to be hungry, and it's going to affect yeah. their development. His whole thing was that, if, mm. you know, it takes away hunger, it affects development. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I, I agree with Shady on, on the, like, Lonzo Ball's jersey shouldn't be selling out in the UCLA bookstore and he doesn't get the money. Um, like, that's ridiculous. Your point. To your point. People's mm. walking around wearing all your stuff. I mean, that went on. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? Arguably the greatest Come on, you, player. Yes, yes. Okay? Yeah. Well, UCLA owns the rights to all his pictures that when he played at UCLA, wow. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's written 16 books. So he has to pay UCLA. Oh, to wow. To, if he wants to use a picture. I did not know that. that. That's, That's crazy. crazy. From that era. So it, it, everybody's name, image, and likeness is their own. They yeah. should, you, we all should own our own name, image, and likeness. Yeah. Right, I agree. So absolutely. Yeah. Now, has it changed it? Uh, totally. But with anything, whether it's the iPhone, what, there's good and bad with everything. Right. Right? Right. I mean, yeah. look, you know, yeah. there's always side effects. Do you really, if a kid starts making in basketball 100000 a year, and he could make, Nowadays, I mean, yeah. 50 yep. million a year in the NBA. Yeah. Yep. Do you really want it, that 100,000 a year taking his hunger away mm. yeah, or giving him money to party when he shouldn't be, you know, he should be right. sleeping? Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so, you know, and Chris Paul's point to me in the conversation was it's just, you know, how, 
he's, his concern was our young people ready to deal with having Ooh, some money yeah. like that. Right. And, yes. and, and, I want, and I want to stay on that Great because I've, I've talked to a lot of coaches in the college football world that I played for, and they said, basically, these kids are soft. NIL really has made these kids soft because... Like entitled? Yeah, yeah, but, like, if coach is yelling at me now, you know what, man, I'm a transfer, I'm going to go here. Mm -hmm. So is it harder from that standpoint, too, really, like, coaching these kids and being able to push these kids? Because, to be honest with you, this generation is really get, <laughs> getting soft and, you know what I mean, and, and sensitive if you're, if you're coaching them hard. Mm. Yeah, I, look, I, I think... I'm just not, I'm not make a, it a tough spot. Yeah. <laughs> this is easy, I, it, thing, but I don't care, so it's all good. Yeah. You know, I'm going to coach the way I coach. Like, yeah. I, I'm not changing. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that kids have changed. I don't think this generation is any different than when we were young and played. I think that adults are different. Ooh, and I think that's okay. the problem. Okay. Yeah. I think the problem is... That Say that one more time. Hold on. I think Who's the, different? The adults. Mm, you're right, right, right. Wow. Yeah. That's the difference. That is the difference. The, 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 one more know, time. One more time. The adults are very different. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my, when I'm at my friend's house and I say something I shouldn't have said at that age, you know, my, you know, and, you know, big Mike Mathis, the NBA official, and, and yeah. he slaps the hell out of me. Another guy. And my dad's all, he, and he's, he's like, big Mike should have slapped you. Hmm. You know, mm. and that's mm -hmm. just that we were raised in a different world. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't have said what you said mm -hmm. or been disrespectful, mm. you, you know, wh whatever. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and that's just how it, it now, um, you know, your dad's going to go sue, sue that, that guy. That's yeah. right. Right? Then we that's got a right. lawsuit yeah. on that. That's right, yeah. You know, yep. The teacher is never right anymore. Mm. You know, so it's just, a, you know, that, that has changed. Yeah. Like, kids don't, they, they follow our lead. Yeah. Right. You know, they look up to us. And when it comes to coaching guys, I just tell them the truth. Look, mm -hmm. you're, you're not making... You know, Jaime Jaquez has made it. He's going to be all rookie in the NBA. Not because of what I, hey, I'm, I'm recruiting. I yeah. developed him. No, no, no. Jaime Jaquez is a warrior. Right. Mm -hmm. right he is right. a soldier that can show up every day. And, and I tell him that to play in the NBA, you better be able to show up every day. Yeah. Yeah. They play 82. Yes. And, yeah. and playoffs. And, they, you know, can you show up every day without the assistant coach saying, come on now, pay attention, mm -hmm. hustle? Nah, you can't do all that. You're out. Right. I'm going to draw you back to basketball uh, directly. Uh, NCAA tournament, there's talk about expanding it. Yeah, how do I've you, seen that. How do you feel about that idea? Uh, I, I'm, I understand. First of all, it will happen. Oh. Okay. Be, be, because at the end of the day, money talks uh, yeah. and everything else walks. Yeah. That's yeah. just my feeling. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think Spain. that there, and, and coaches, I'm not for it, but co there's coaches who say, well, there's a too low of a percentage of our teams don't make the NCAA yeah, yeah, tournament. Right. About, yeah. Okay, but look, look, there's too many Division One teams. 360, come on. That's a lot, yeah. You know, you're really, like, you can't compare, yeah. you know, some of those teams to UCLA or right. Kentucky or whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah. So let's just be honest. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so there's really how many re Division One teams that when they say in the next five years you can pay your players, mm -hmm. You'll find out who's really Division One, yeah, because mm. yeah. that's coming. Where we're going to be able to play our own players, mm. and it will come from the school. There's so another, I, you know, another change that's already happened, which is we, we introduced you Thanks. as the two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year. <laughs> the, and hey. gonna, we ain't going to find three because there is no Pac-12. I need to say um, I find I need to find those awards. <laughs> <laughs> those are um, collectors' items. Oh, yeah. Pac-12. <laughs> but you're moving to the Big Ten. Yeah. How how is that going to impact UCLA and the program? Well, from the school standpoint, um, you know, it's already a worldwide brand, university, you know, sure. wise and UCLA Medical and all that. But uh, for the branding opportunities of all our athletes, you're now doing you're in coast to coast. Mm. I mean, how many leagues are D.C. to New York to, mm. to L.A., yeah. Chicago? Yeah. I mean, we're literally the only league spanning coast to coast in major cities. So mm. that's opportunity. Now, I'm going to have to have a real comfortable travel pillow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the logistics of the Big Ten has to work out. So, look, basketball and football are easy for the Big Ten to work out to travel. Yeah. It's the Olympic sports. Yeah. Mm. You know, they, they don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah, work yeah. all that out. I mean, we look, we're flying on private planes and yeah. eating steak. So. Does, does recruiting, does it help you with recruiting because you have that, that bigger footprint? The era of what league you play in affecting recruiting is 10 years ago. Mm. Really? Yeah, that, that, there was a time I want to play in the Big East. I want to play... Yeah. You know, I think once the Big East started breaking up, the East right. Coast kid, you know, it was always kind of a thing, yep. you know. Um, More tradition now. Because Big East was the thing thing. Now, now yeah. it's yeah. just, now you have the NIL, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just kind of all blended together, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, it just doesn't ever come up. 
in the in the recruiting. Hmm. Well, that, that's going to be who gets I got one more before we leave. When you got experts, you got to get all the details. Yes, you do. I like the place game. That was very good. Okay. McCrone, do you do you take oh offense and and NCAA you know tournament? Do you take offense or you take defense? So I'm going to tell you, you uh, I'm going to give this to you. You'll be able to break. It's KenPalm.com. Okay. Okay, there's only Ooh. two teams left with the top 10 efficiency in offense and defense. I've seen that. I can, I can tell you right now. Connecticut and it, Arizona. Because it's, um, it's um, in the last yeah. 20 years, 25 years of the winners, yeah. it's, uh, this is not a game. It's, uh, <laughs> if you, 20, top 25 in defense and top 40 in offense. Yes. That combination if, for the last... 50 some 60 years, it that works. winner is. Here's that. your so, problem. There's seven teams left. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm that's what that I'm trying to top give you. Yeah. And top yeah. 20 in both. Yeah. But there's only two in the top 10. Right. One Arizona you, and Utah. Yeah, well, my dog Shady yeah. does bet a lot. Some people's brackets is gonna be messed up. So yeah. Four number one seeds left in this I know. <laughs> Great game. Who should be on upset alert out of the number one seeds? Well, if you look at recruiting, Duke's got uh way better players than Houston, mm. but if you watch the game... They don't have no dog in them, though. If you watch the game, it's hard to bet against Houston, yeah. right? Houston be really rocking. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. Houston got yeah. pit yeah. bulls. Yeah, they got do. dogs. Yes, Jamal, yeah. like, Jamal Shedd is not necessarily right. like that, yeah. though. Yeah. Houston yeah. always yeah. plays like Ooh, that. Yeah. that boy good. That boy good. He can put the helmet on. Yes, he can. He, he, he can certain players, you, you, can see, you can see it in them, though, right? In football, I think it's easier to see. Yo, you see... Um, in basketball, when a guy that straight dominates, you can really see it. So, mm. Houston yeah. got dogs. So. I, I would say um, North Carolina. That's my team. Is in trouble. Oh, he <laughs> spoke too soon. Against Arizona. That's my team. Oh, Against Arizona. Well, look, look. If you do, you, you, you know, if you yeah. do play a little bit for fun, North Carolina is facing down. If they play Arizona yeah. this weekend in the Elite Eight, <sighs> the game's in L.A. Arizona's higher than them in the efficiency. Arizona will be a one or two point yeah. favorite in that game. Ooh. Um, Mick, you know, you made my day today, Mick. You don't even know it, coach. Even though the two, even though they're the two seed. Mm. So, um, and it's you know Arizona's fans will they'll be ten to twelve thousand oh, yeah. strong. Uh, in they LA. do travel. Oh, yeah. So that, that that'll be the toughest. You know, I would say you know when the one seed's not going to be favored. Right. Yeah. If that game happens. Okay. Coach, thank you very much for, for Thanks, joining man. us. Uh, we're going to have to take a break from the Mick Cronin Show here. Um, good luck next season. Yeah, exactly. Coming up, Caleb Williams could be headed to Chicago, and DJ Moore has some advice for the guy who could be his new QB. You have to hear this next on Speed. Y'all know I got eligibility left. I was just going to say, that. I was going to know that. Coach. All right. I'll all right, everyone expects the Bears to draft Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick. DJ Moore has some advice for his potential teammates. What do you say? What do you say? You can't really worry about the legacy oh. of Justin Fields. <laughs> Adding, he's got to go out there and worry about his own thing. So, Shady. I don't believe, I don't believe Slate. Let you, me see that. You, Let me read you, it. I got to read myself. <laughs> do you agree with DJ Moore's advice for Caleb Williams that he shouldn't worry about the legacy? The legacy of you, Justin You trolling. Let, you trolling. No, let me, no, no. Let me that read was his, his word, not mine. Legacy. He really said that. He used that word. <laughs> what, what legacy? You know what? If he got a legacy, Philadelphia Eagles, I need a whole statue. I need two statues, right? <laughs> Where they go? Legacy. One in front of the stadium. What? Where the other one? What? Be? I need a statue right in front of the, the 50. 50. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the? What the hell? He got a, 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 a legacy. What he did? Yeah. What he do? I don't know. You know what? That's a, my note. That is a great example of trolling, mm. right? Having a good mm. fun with it. You know, uh, Justin Fields, who he was campaigning for to stay there, yeah. he, lay, he leaves. Yeah. And I think he's having fun with it. Because yeah. there ain't no way in the world he thinks that Justin Fields got a, a, a legacy. Mm. He's, he's 10 and 28 as a starter. Every other year they're talking about replacing him. They finally do it, God willing, because they want to win. So I, I think Caleb Williams should go there and just be himself, right? Mm. You see a lot of guys from the Bears keep speaking out, right? And I don't know if it's... I don't know what it may be. Right? I know there's a lot of attention in Chicago, and they want to win, and they think the last piece is the quarterback. They did a great job of putting these players in place for the number one pick, Caleb Williams, yeah. to save the franchise. So I think it matters just him going there and just being himself. The same guy you was at Oklahoma, the same guy you was at USC, just be that. And I think that they already have to embrace you because they are setting the stage where you are the guy. Just go on there and, and, and win ball games and be the player you've been pl playing. That's what got you at the number one pick. But... For all the other stuff, though, like, come on. 
I'm not gonna focus on that legacy stuff because he because if we trolling, is he trolling up, James Jones? Trolling up. Say, I hope he just comes in here and gets ready to work. And I think that's the main thing as a rookie, right? When you come in here, you are coming from college, right? You have dudes that has been in the National Football League for a long time, right? Yeah. They're gonna be the leaders of the team, but we all know we are going to need you to win. Yeah. Come in here with your head down go to work, and eventually this is going to be your team. We all know that. Eventually he is going to be the best player on the Chicago Bears. That's the type of player he is, and he's going to be playing the quarterback position. So, yeah, you have Keenan Allen. Yeah, you have DJ Moore. Yeah, you have Everett. Yeah, you have Clement. Yeah, you have Swift. But you are going to be the best player on this football team. Mm. But just come in mm. here and work. Don't come in here like, man, already, you know, kind of cocky. This is, come in here yeah. and get ready to work. Eventually all that other stuff will happen. So that's what I think DJ Moore is trying to tell him. Right? Yeah. Justin Fields is out of the building. You just come in here head down, man, and let's get ready to work. I was hung up on the word legacy, too. But I believe, and to answer the question, I love that he said what he said. Because I think we just have different definitions of what legacy meant. And he was asked about the popularity of Justin oh, Fields yeah. in the locker room. They do like him. Right? Love and him. his legacy of being a great locker room guy and a guy that the team loved. Aww. And, and mm. DJ Moore loving him in particular because he had his best season statistically mm -hmm. with Justin Fields. And if DJ Moore is saying, look, don't worry about getting me the rock. Like, don't worry about the legacy, the legacy of what Justin Fields did for me, mm. kid. Come in and get us games. Mm. Spread the ball around. Help us win. Don't worry about the popularity of Justin and you got to be something to kind of win the locker room over. Just be you. be you. If that's what DJ Moore is saying, then I appreciate yeah. that a veteran is setting the table for, uh, like that for Caleb Williams, Williams coming into the game, into the team. Uh, I just don't understand. How do you think a rookie going to come into the locker room, man? <laughs> like, come How you coming? How you coming like, into the locker room? Everybody knows when you get drafted, we had Carson. He was the first pick of the draft. Mm. You just gonna come, you don't know what to expect. So you gonna come in trying to be cool with making sure you feel people, like, come in ready to work. What, you think I'm gonna come in and not do anything? Right. Mm. He's gonna be ready to work. And, and so, DJ Moore really likes Justin Fields. He appreciated the type of season that he had. Sure. And, and he didn't want to see Justin Fields go. Why would you? I was in Carolina. I was playing good. I go to Chicago. This is the best season I've ever had. Yeah. Of course you should want Justin Fields to stay, but Caleb Williams is going to come in there ready to work regardless if you make this statement or not. And, and we've all been in a uh, But doesn't, room. doesn't it help that he says he's gonna do it's that. not going to be an issue? DJ gonna, I'm talking just, about, not Caleb. It's not hating, if it is, I don't even know how it can be an issue because Caleb Williams is going to be the quarterback unless he plays terrible mm -hmm. and you have new coaches. New general manager, uh, new receiver. Right, yeah. So everybody's going to be going and up out of there. The thing is, with, with Caleb Williams, you just put your head down and work. Because you don't know how everybody's going to react to you. Mm. Once you show them that you're a good dude but, and you can play, you're fine. But, 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 they just want to see if you can play. My thing is, like, as a, as a veteran elite, like, uh, and on the team, why, why are you even bringing this up? I remember when we had a chance to get Josh Allen, right? He's a hell of a player. I wasn't like, oh, man, well, no. we come in here, I want him to be like, yeah. like what, why are we that's doing my, all that? That's, that's, my, that's, yeah. that's my Come on, that's, man, that's, that, that's terrible. That I don't like me, that. That's my point. That comes off to me as dry hating a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I don't want that Hollywood stuff. I want him to be this. If anybody here knows dry hating. Oh. All right, uh, coming up. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Right. to. Deion Sanders did not hold back on hey, where his son, oh, Theodore about Sanders, Dion, not, not you, and man. Travis Hunter. You can take it any way you want. I'm talking about, oh. about Deion. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Deion's got a feeling about where he they will and won't be drafted next year. That's next. Ooh, this is going to be spicy. On speed. <laughs> Deion Sanders is coming off his first season as Colorado's head coach, and he's making some bold statements about two of his top players, his son slash quarterback Shadour Sanders and two-way star Travis Hunter. Coach Prime predicts both of them will be top four picks in the 2025 draft. But he also said, I know where I want them to go. So there's certain cities that it ain't going to happen. It's going to be an Eli situation. And remember, Eli Manning refused to play for the Chargers and was traded to the Giants. 
who selected him with the number one overall pick in 2004. So, Mr. Jones, what's your reaction to Deion Sanders' comments on Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter? My brother Prime, man. I, <laughs> I love my dude. Um, listen, if this, if we were just talking about Shadur, mm -hmm. I can understand where he's coming from, hmm. right? We all know for a very, very long time, the Bears organization does not do good with quarterbacks, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we dra they draft him and think he's good, just coaches is getting fired, coaches, just no stability, right? A bad place to go if you are a quarterback. So I can understand if he's talking about Shador, like quarterback spot, I want him to be able to go to a situation to where I think he can have the most success, right? Yeah. We've seen quarterbacks do that before. Like he said, Eli Manning, we've seen Elway, we've seen quarterbacks say, I'm not going there. But these other dudes? Mm. You are a receiver, corner, safety. Why does it matter where you go? Guard and tackle the man. Come downhill and tackle. Like, it doesn't matter where you go. Are you trying to put him and say, oh, this is the best defense in the league. I want him playing here. Well, if they're the best defense in the league, they probably ain't going to be needing your son or Travis. So for me, I understand the quarterback situation. But when you are a position player, mm. especially a corner, because that's where we believe that that, that Travis Hunter is going to play corner in the league and Shiloh playing safety, why does it matter where you land? You should just be one to get drafted at the highest place possible to get the most money that you possibly can, not where you're going at that position. Quarterback's a little different. <sighs> yeah, it's prime. Uh... <laughs> this is a tough one for you guys. Man, I can tell. It is, just because um, yeah, the quarterback, I get that part. Eli Manning did it. A lot of other guys did it. But for the skill guys, it's like, hey, we, we have to be here, right? But I, I'll say this. This is prime, though, right? It, it, he went through this. He, he told teams, listen, man, there's no reason for me to meet with y'all because I'm not going to go past the third or second pick, right? Remember, he, and he got drafted, yeah, talking about that. So, yeah, so, so all I'm saying is that, like, when he has these remarks and he's, he believes this, and, and if he believes that, I'm okay with it because that's who he is, right? He told one of the teams, the, the Lions, he said, listen, man, I'm going to ask for so much money, you have to put me on layaway. You do not want to draft me. This is what he thinks, what he believes. So it's, if, if, if Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, believes that, and that's what it is. I mean, we all gonna have our own opinion about it. I just think that for some reason, yo, when he speaks things to existence, it happens. Yeah. It happens. All right. It does. We're not done with this subject. We'll get TJ and my reaction to Coach Prime after Prime the break. I trust. More speak after this. Welcome back to Speak. TJ, let's get right into it. What's your reaction to Deion Sanders' comments about Shadur and Travis? I don't mind it one bit. And the reason is we live in a world of have and have nots. Mm. Deion is a have. Mm. And so that's the world we live in. He can do these type of things and behind closed doors, they may say whatever they want. As soon as those doors open up, oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Sanders Prime, what would you like? Mm -hmm. And that's what's gonna happen. That's the world we live in. He wants his son mm -hmm. to be in the best possible situation that he can be in in the league. Yeah. Because for years, it's, it's a privilege to be in the league, and it is. But you want to succeed. You don't want to just get to the league. You want to have success. And so that's where he's trying to put his son. And I get with Travis Hunter because Travis Hunter's family, whoever it is, his mother's dad, his people, they put him with prime, and he said, I'm going to look after him. I'm going to mm -hmm. take care of him. So he's treating Travis Sunner as if that's his son. And so if you're Travis Sunner's parents and, oh, he just worried about his boys. He ain't worried about where Travis go. So he's looking after all of them. I don't mind it at all because this is the world we live in. Um, some people can do it and others can't. He's one that can. I'd be with you if this was a year later. This is what I don't understand. Colorado's coming off of a lot of hype and then kind of fell flat. That year. All right. And we are a year away from having to make any decisions on where these guys are going to go in the draft. The focus to me is in the wrong place, whether it's with Travis Hunter or his sons, whatever it might be. He sounds more like a parent than he does a head coach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of a football team right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, I agree with you. The higher you're drafted, the more you, the better your position, the more the team is investing in you, the longer rope you have to prove what you're able to do, right? And what they're going to do for you. But why are you doing this now before you got a whole season to go through? And what does it say to all the players that you're recruiting that you're focused on these three mm. cats? Mm. Like, 
okay, where do I fit into this picture? Do I fit into this picture? I just, for what was expected of Colorado and what is going to be expected next season, Dion's got some work to do. Yeah. You guys know that, right? Yeah, it, ain't, it ain't easy, and that team was not very good at the end. Yeah. So that's my only issue is that he's creating distractions yeah. right now for the job at hand that you just simply I mean, but, but, but every school has big players that, that you're going to talk about. Caleb Williams, yeah. right? We, we knew who's going to be number one pick this year or last year. So it's a conversation if you ask a question that – I'm gonna speak on this because of who the person it may be. Sure, but but that was that was. I mean, if this was next year, midway through next season, like whatever it might be, right. we haven't even gotten into the season. You're still yeah. recruiting next He's year's. Them know. Well, not next only year's that, team. Them know early. This, is, this is exactly what this NIL is doing. Mm. When me, Shady, and TJ were coming out, we didn't care where we went because. I got to provide for the family. I'm trying to buy my mama a house. Well, you know what? Travis Hunter just bought his mama a house in college. Hmm. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So everything we was trying to get to the league for to accomplish our dreams as hard as we worked, like, you could call me first day, second day, third, it don't matter. I'm trying to take care of my family. I don't care what team call me. I'm going to play for them, and I'm going to be the reason why that team wins. Well, nowadays is I can stay in college, mm -hmm. yeah. or I can kind of pick where I don't need your money. So I don't care about going one. I could go five to this team. That's this team. I'm already good financially. Back then, we trying to provide for our people. They already provide for their people. Mm -hmm. And this man is a junior in college and bought his mama crib off NIL money. I love that though. You know what I mean? So it's that is crazy, changing huh? a lot in really how these kids is thinking and, and parents and coaches is thinking because Prime is both of them. And, and this is why you have to take what he's saying to heart. Draft one of these boys in the first round and they don't like who drafts them. I'm not going to sign. I'll enter the draft next year. You know why? Because at NAL, I have enough money now. And so now you've wasted mm. a first-round pick. How that going to go over with your fan base? And so when he says this, draft them if you want to, and then they just, you know what? I have enough money. I'll sit out this year, and I'll enter the draft next year. That's a wasted first-round mm. pick. I wonder, though, if that would have and then impact teams to just go, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to draft him. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to roll the but dice now, on that. Now, now, can now you're can talking ask, about it's all about how he plays. Let me ask you one question real quick for Lito. Caleb Williams could do that, right? Yeah. Do you think them boys can do it like that, though? I'm just asking. I, I mean, I'm trying to just gauge it. That's what I'm saying. For me, it's all about how he looks on yeah, that yeah, field yeah, yeah, this right, year. Right, right, and right, you know right? what? Everything's supposed to be better. O-line and all that. Yeah, if yeah. you're going okay. out there yeah. and you win in the Heisman or you look like Caleb, right. then yep. yes, you're going to be able to do that. Yeah. If they look like this this year, yeah. all this stuff he's right. talking right, right now, that stuff's going to be off the table even if you are prime. Yeah. And, yeah. When that, and when is that going to happen? Next season. Mm. All, right. all right, coming up, UCA, uh, USA versus the world in the NBA USA. USA. game. I'm going with them. That could be happening sooner than later. Is it a good idea? That is next what? on Speak. Welcome back to Speak. We could be seeing big changes in the NBA All-Star game. Commissioner Adam Silver says, quote, we are looking to look at U.S. versus international adding the league should do different things and make it a celebration of basketball. I think we all agree they should do different things than from what we've been seeing. So, James, is it a good idea for the NBA to go USA versus international as the all-star game? I think it's a good idea because I think we'll see them compete more. You yeah. know, because... A little pride on the line. You're going to have some pride on the line. We're not losing to the boys. It always... Yeah, I know it... And none of these dudes raise like Kobe, but it always goes back to when Kobe ran through Paul Gasol. You my teammate, but boy, yep. you ain't my teammate right now, man. It's USA. So I think it'll, they'll compete. Look. You with it? I like it. Yeah? I like it. Yeah. We need something. America, right? we stand, baby. Let's go. Now, Let's I will go. say this. They did this once before as one of the warm-up games. They had Team USA versus uh, the world, 2015 to the 2020. Yeah. And uh, it was three and three, but... Boy, they didn't have the internationals that they no. have. It might be a, I'm, I'm telling you, it might be Listen, a comeuppance for us. It's not going to change anything. It's something different. It's still going to be 200 to 197. You don't think they'll play some more defense, Charlie? No, no. no. <laughs> they don't no. play defense in the regular game. The anticipation of it, no. They might, but they might play a little harder overall. Yeah. All right, that's it for us. Uh, e, Joy, thank you. Race Hub is next.